In this video, I'll break down how to create a freeze frame transition in Final Cut Pro 10. So you can see right here, here are a whole bunch of just, or just made like two main examples of a freeze frame transition, where basically a cutout of the subject appears on screen, kind of frozen, and then that transitions into the next clip. So in this video, I'll just kind of give you a basic understanding of how to create your own freeze frame transitions. Now, I've probably already made like 30 videos on just different freeze frame transitions. So in this video, I want to kind of just give you the basics of how to create freeze frame transitions. Uh, transition and then you can go back and watch some of my older videos so if you want to you know, do different you know, have different ways of creating different freeze frame transitions but this video I just want to give you the overall basics of how to create this really cool popular transition in Final Cut Pro 10. So the first thing you want to do is you obviously want to create the freeze frame. Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways to go about actually creating this effect. Well, mainly there's two different ways. The first one is the method that I almost always use, which is just using option F to create a freeze frame. So if I click on it right here, go to the first frame, click on option F, I basically just created a freeze frame of the first frame. Now that's one method you can do. However, another method you may want to consider, especially if you're going to adjust the anchor point, is head over here and go to, click on right here and go to hold frame. Now the only reason I would suggest using this method is again if you adjust the anchor point. Because if you use option F, what's going to happen is that that is going to reset the anchor point. So if you don't want to reset the anchor point, then you want to use hold F. I mean hold, just you know, click on the hold, um, a hold speed option right here. You only want to use this if you're adjusting the anchor point of you know this clip right here. And I made a whole bunch of videos going over different you know anchor point you know freeze frames. But only do that if you're adjusting the anchor point. If you're not adjusting the anchor point, then you don't have to worry about that. Just option F will do the job. So if I go over here to the first clip or, or go to the second clip right here you want to go to the first frame it's very important you go to the first frame then click on option F and what's that what that's going to do is it's going to create a freeze frame of the first frame so if I play it right here if I play it it just freezes on screen right there and plays however long you want the clip to last and then goes into the second clip now what I like to do is I like to just um, like set the duration of the freeze frame so click on control D so just click on control D and then type in the number of frames for example I'm gonna do 15 so click on return right there so basically what I just did was I set that for 15 frames so if I play it right here it freezes on screen for 15 frames now what you want to do is you want to take that freeze frame and then just place it right on the first clip so if I play it all of a sudden the first clip as you see the second clip just pops on screen it freezes and then transitions into the second clip so that's basically the basics as you can see it's basically completely frozen and then goes into the second clip right there. Now what you want to do next is you basically want to cut out the subject. Now what I found when updating to Final Cut Pro 10, I'm on version I believe 10.6.1, I found that when updating to Final Cut, the masking seems a little bit better. Just overall the masking just seems a lot better. The edges and everything, it just overall in my opinion, I just feel like they've improved the masking a little bit. That could just be me, but honestly once I updated to Final Cut, I just feel like the masking got um, a little bit better. That's just, you know, my personal uh, preference. So what I'm going to do right here is head over to the effects panel right here. What you want to do is you want to scroll down to mask. So you can see right here mask. Now what you want to do is you want to take the draw mask and just apply it on top of the clip. So just place the draw mask on top of the clip that you intend to cut out. Now what you want to do is this is just what I personally do. Now again, I'm just you know going over what I personally do. It can you know it can be completely different for you know view your workflow what you want to do. But what I like to do is I like to disable these workspaces right here. So I'll disable this right here and I'm just going to drag the window all the way down. So as far as you want. Now I'm going to head over here go to this and then the zoom over here and click on 600% all that does is you can see it just zooms right in so you can get a really close precision now of course if you're doing you know you're doing a, 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 a legit freeze frame and now as you can see right here I'm just using the draw mask and I'm just cutting out the subject right here now I'll, I'll put a little effort into it it's not going to be you know perfect because I don't want to you know, sit here for like you know 20 minutes cutting out a subject but it's really important when you do any kind of any sort of freeze frames or any sort of draw or, or a masking 
is you really want to zoom into the subject. You really want to make sure you zoom and you don't want to just zoom, you don't want to have the screen you know, all the way zoomed out and just trying to cut the subject because trust me, that's not going to work. So I cut out right here. Now, as you can see, there's a couple parts that maybe even you can see that are, that are hard to see. It's definitely, uh, doing freeze frames is definitely, you know, difficult. And keep in mind, you might not be able to do this to, you know, every single clip. Not every single clip is going to be able to do a freeze frame because sometimes it's just going to be too um, blurry. And that's definitely, you know, a situation where I've run into. There's a couple of times where I've wanted to create a freeze frame, but it's just impossible because the screen is a little bit too blurry. So one thing that I would recommend you do is go to the beginning. Like once you cut up your clip and you have everything all cut up, I'd always encourage you to, to you know, cut your clips up and everything like that before you start adding a uh, visual effects. But what I like to do is I like to go to the beginning and the end of every single clip and just see if I can create a freeze frame. If it's the subject is way too blurry, then I wouldn't even attempt to create a freeze frame because it's just going to be impossible um, to do. But that's just something that I like to do is after I cut up the clip, I like to go to the beginning of every single clip and just see if I can do it. As you can see right here, even this ear section right here, it's really hard to see what you're doing. Now keep in mind when it's animating and it has motion blur, it is really hard to tell if the mask is done correctly. So basically my tips or my advice would be to make sure, just make sure the background isn't showing. Even though the mask may not be perfect, it's really important to make sure that the background is not showing. That is really, really important. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut out, uh, just continue to cut out right here. So just take the draw mask and let's just cut out a 21 Savage. So all you're just doing, as you can see right here, is I'm just going around the outline right here and I'm just cutting out him right here. Now I'm gonna go all the way out to 50%. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just click on Shift. I wanna add a couple Couple extra points right here especially when I change it to B spline you don't want to change a little too much of course you can go ahead and adjust the points and then all I like to do is I click on it right here I'll go back over and zoom in to 600% this window down all the way here now as you can see right here you have this um, circle icon right here click on it and voila now you have connected the mask and if I go over here and then I click on this little icon right here so as you can see you can disable the mask or you disable the points right here as you can see that is a pretty good um, cutout obviously put a lot more time and effort into it but just for the sake of the tutorial I think that looks pretty good now one thing that I found too that helps me is if for example if I zoom into uh, let's say six 600% but I still don't think Final Cut zoomed in enough or I want to zoom in more what I like to do sometimes is head over to the scale and let you just increase the scale and move the position so just in case the 600% isn't zoomed in enough you can actually just zoom in now if you're wondering is that gonna affect anything no if I take the draw mask right here adjust the draw mask right here now I can just reset the scale and position so if I head over reset the scale and then reset the position right here it does nothing so if you can you can adjust the scale and don't worry it's not going to re uh, mess up the mask and then you just want to reset the scale and position i only like to do that if i just 600 percent isn't just zoomed in enough i want to and i want to zoom into the image um even more now of course what you want to do next is you want to adjust the feather so you can see right here here are the harsh edges so basically what you want to do is if you take the feather and you just invert it basically just smooths out the edge this way or you can take the feather and smooth it out this way now this is a personal preference and it's going to completely de depend on your um your image or what you're trying to cut out basically i would say go between negative three or positive three so for example i'll, I'll just try like let's try kind of inverting the mask or feathering in a little bit so let's go to negative three and let's see how that looks as you can see that looks okay but especially when you're doing like curly hair or like dreads or stuff like that it looks a little sharp and looks a little bit weird so in this case what i would do is i would probably feather it outward a little bit so let's say you know three for example and there you go so you can see the feather the hair is a lot it just looks a lot smoother and of course you know, I didn't put, you know, 100% effort into this. I'll put a lot more time and effort into the mask. So you can see right there, you might want to feather it in or feather it out. It's completely dependent. Of course, you know, if something messed up, let's say you feathered it out and something messed up, go over here, click on this icon. And of course I can go to the points. I can just readjust the points. So let's say I want to just adjust the points. So a lot of it, a lot of masking is a lot of trial and error and just going through and just trying out different things and figuring out what works. I just want to give you my little tips and tricks. Another 
another really helpful tip to know when masking is you have a lot more control over the point than you may think. So if I head over to this point right here, let's say I want to change the curvature. If I right click on the point, I can click over right here and just click on smooth. So now the point is kind of smoothed out. Now may ask you, may ask yourself, okay, what else can you do? Well, I can actually click on the point right here. I can right click on it. Of course I can move it and I can also just delete the point. So let's say I want to delete a point. I just really like how it looked. I can delete a point. I can also right click and I can also click on add a point. So you can add a point, you can delete a point, you can change the curvature. So you have a lot more control over the mask um, than you may think. Now, a, a really important tip that I like to do is after I go through and adjust everything, I like to basically uh, change the shape type. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. So if I click on it, I'll go over here to shape type bezier, and I'm gonna go to B spine. As you can see, the edges are really sharp. If I change the B spine, what that's gonna do is it's just going to help smooth out the edges. So you see right here, I'll just zoom out right here. So you can see right here, now the edges are smoothed out. So let's get over here, change it back to bezier. As you can see, the edges are a lot sharper, but if I change the shape type to B spine, all that's going to do is going to really help smooth out the edges. Now, of course, you want to go through and readjust the points, but after I do everything, I like to change the shape type to B spine because it just helps smooth out the points and looks a lot nicer. And of course, like I said before, you may have to go through and readjust the points. So click on it right here and you may have to, for example, you know, add a point. So let's head over here. Maybe I want to add a point to help smooth it out. I can delete a point. I can do whatever you want. So again, you may have to go through and readjust everything, you know, just to make sure everything looks good. But overall, I think that looks pretty good just for the sake of the tutorial. Now, another thing I want to include in this video is let's say, for example, you may look at your freeze frame and say, well, I need to add another mask. Well, how do you do that? Well, there's a couple ways of doing that. The first method I would do recommend is using a compound clip. So option G. So we'll just call this um, cutout right here. So basically creating a compound clip. Basically, what I'm trying to get across is don't add multiple masks to the same clip. That's really going to slow your computer down. So, for example, let's say, you know, part of the background was showing right here. Obviously, it's not. But let's just say for the example, let's say part of the background is showing, creating a compound clip. And I'm just going to add another draw mask right here and just cut out and click on invert mask. Obviously, it isn't showing. But for example, if it is, let's say you need to add another mask, create a compound clip. Basically, what you want to do is you just don't want to add multiple masks to the same clip. Because what I found is adding multiple masks to the same clip can often really slow Final Cut down or slow your computer down. So I would encourage you to do that. Another method I would encourage you to do is create a copy now I would encourage you to do this if you have um, like multiple masks you need to add multiple masks so let's click on option W create a gap clip all I'm going to do is click on command C I'm going to copy the clip command V pasting the clip so all I'm doing is I just paste the clip so as you can see right here it's just the exact same clip all I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the draw mask on the clip now and this is probably a little weird but this is just what I like to do I'm just trying to give you, you know, my kind of workflow and how I do this so I'm going to add a draw mask onto the clip and I'm going to cut out this icon this little section right here obviously in this example I don't need to but I just want to you know, give you an example or demonstrate how to do this so then I would go command C copy this and then press all this clip right here and then what I'll do is uh, uh, press on shift command V to paste attributes uncheck what you don't want so for example the draw mask that's fine click on paste as you can see right there you go now it pastes that draw mask onto there now I only do that um, if there's multiple masks there are tons of different methods to do it I just want to show you my workflow and what I do if I have to add multiple masks so hopefully that was helpful and hopefully that wasn't you know, a little too confusing maybe be watching this and say okay well that's great you have the freeze frame but how do I get the freeze frame to animate so as you can see right here it just pops on the screen you may ask yourself, okay, well, how do I get the actual freeze frame to animate? Well, if you don't have much experience with Final Cut or video editing, basically you would animate it using keyframes. That's basically how you animate anything is by using keyframes. So I'm going to zoom out to 50%. So for example, I want him to slide in from the left. So I'm going to enable the transparency grid. I'm going to make sure I'm at the beginning of the clip, take the X axis, and I'm just going to drag 21 Savage all the way off the screen right there. So as far as I want, that looks pretty good. So you're just going to drag him off the screen. So I'm going to do is click on done. I'm going to go to the beginning of the clip, make sure I'm the beginning of the clip, place on here this little keyframe icon, Place uh, press right here so it clicks on add keyframe. So click on it right here and it should turn yellow. If it doesn't turn yellow, you make sure you want to click on it again. 
go to the end of the clip so just go to the end of the clip go to the very last frame and then i'm just going to take the position and i'm just going to type in zero this is just a simple one there's way more advanced ways to do this but if i play it all that's going to happen is as you see he is just sliding on the screen so 21 savage is just sliding on the screen so if i play it right here let's just zoom all the way into 100 percent if i play it the two clips right here as you can see he just slides onto the frame right there and it creates a really nice um clean um transition now there are a couple of things you can do if i click on the clip right here i can right click on it and i can click on show video animation i can go to transform go to transform go to position and then i can right click on the keyframe and i can change it to linear or smooth so i can go right here linear or smooth so it just depends on what you want so for example if you try the 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 keyframe is a little bit weird try changing the uh, keyframe path to linear it's all dependent on you know what you want to do but i just want to throw that in because there's a couple times where the smooth animation just looks a little bit weird now before you go, you're not quite done yet. There's one really important step that you're gonna need to do, and that is add motion blur. Anytime you're doing any sort of keyframing, it's really important to add motion blur because it's going to help smooth out the animation. Now this is a motion blur, a motion blur pack I got from Ryan Nagel. I'll put the link in the description. All you wanna do is just take the motion blur, place it on top of the freeze frame, go to the end of the freeze frame, and then just kind of trim it to the freeze frame. So you can see right there, all it's going to do is it's just going to add blur to the freeze frame anytime you're doing keyframing or anytime you're doing animation it's really important to add motion blur because as you can see it might be a little bit laggy but it should be okay as you can see right there the animation just looks a lot smoother now of course you can add more motion blur and more intense or whatever you want now sometimes what happens is i can actually go here click on option g and i can just um you know just type in freeze frame so all i did was just create a compound clip so i can create a compound clip sometimes this works sometimes it's doesn't basically this will only apply the motion blur to the freeze frame and not the clip um, below it so it, it all depended on what you want so let's play it right here and see how it looks sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so let's see how that looks and there you go that looks perfectly fine as you can see he just slides on with some really nice motion blur just to help really smooth out the animation and you have a really cool freeze frame transition and now you can use the same you know principles and the basics and the things that I taught you in this video to create your own freeze frames and like I said before you can go ahead and watch my old videos on a whole bunch of different freeze frames that I did now that you understand the basics now you can take these basics and do whatever you want either use my tutorials other tutorials you watch other music videos or come up with your own this video was just basically give you a very basic understanding of how to create freeze frames in Final Cut Pro 10. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and informative. If you're new to this channel, I upload Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials every week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you enjoy these types of videos, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, I have a playlist with over 290 Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials. So you want to watch more videos like this, definitely go ahead and check out that playlist. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.